All right, it's six thirty. We'll now call the school board of Garden Public Schools board of directors. We'll call the meeting to order, and we'll go to executive session. We have personnel issues. All right, it's after seven. We'll now return from the executive session. We'll call the meeting back to order. So I'll, this is probably we're not supposed to take this part of it. So the first thing would be. Re, as we reconvene, reorganization of the board. So, uh, Hirsch has been the president of the board. So, is there anyone else who wants that position, or is there nominations for to be the president of the board? Or you want to keep it the same? It's, it's whatever y'all decide. I got one, one, one negative. <laughs> I make a motion we keep our board of directors the same. Rodney Hirsch, president. Yolanda, secretary. Bobby Vice President. Bobby's Vice President. Sorry, Robbie. Sorry. Second motion. We've got a motion in a second. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. All in the dissent, same sign. That motion passed. You've been telling them how much I call you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all yours now, sir. Who wants to lead us in prayer? Dearly Lord, Lord, I just thank you for today. God, I just thank you for this opportunity for us to gather together. God, I just pray for your wisdom and your insight as we make decisions for our school and our community. God, I just pray that you allow us to make decisions that keep our children safe and help educate those and they grow in your ways. God, we thank you for this day. Amen. Amen. Stand and say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have some recognitions that we want to, something that I want, I think is very important that we start in our district. And so I've asked Ms. Jones if she would start to recognize some folks. And then I'm going to ask them, us as board, if y'all would, we'd all stand together. And as they come through, that she'll tell you what who they are, and then you can, you, we can applaud them. Or if you want to stay seated, doesn't matter. I'm going to stand and get a picture because <laughs> sure. we're going to put that out public. Okay, so it's my honor to recognize three individuals tonight that are within our district that work very, very hard. Um, there are team, men, team members that are, make, have tremendous pride in the work that they do, and it's obvious. They play a vital role in the success of our district, and their quality of their work is visible daily. This is through the grounds, operations, and facilities, or whatever else that may be put on them um, from day to day. These gentlemen have made an impact by displaying strong and positive work ethic and lots of flexibility. They have accomplished a number of projects in record timing, and they are always available at any given time and save many of us at the drop of a hat throughout the day. I think many of us agree too, that are just sitting around. They are a true testament to what excellence is. So tonight, we would like to present a certificate of appreciation and of excellence to three special members. We have Scott Francis, Appreciate it. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. You walk around and check. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, you don't make food. I don't feel like 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 food. We have to follow that too, right? Thank 
Yeah, the bad game is definitely that single thing. <laughs> And last but not least, who gave me a really bad look when he walked in the door tonight, <laughs> Brian Watson. <laughs> Me and you guys <laughs> that wasn't her idea. <laughs> and what what did we turn the other day? Third twenty one ish. She just had a twenty nine ish. Yeah. Birthday. That's a few. Just a little bit. <laughs> Ryan was mowing and yelled at me across the grass. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> we still got a dog. <laughs> And his family. very <laughs> The first people I met when I got here, Kendall, who drug Scott over, said, You gotta meet this guy. <laughs> and and started they started listing off things we need to fix. <laughs> Most important people. Like I said, hey, we will we will get at it. Now I ask you a very important question. Do you deer hunt? <laughs> Did you learn anything? I learned very much. <laughs> when y'all get time, look at his picture. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Consider action from executive session. We, with the exception of Jacob Moore. I second that. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor of that motion, say aye. Uh, All in sense, same sign. That, that motion passed. Except the person that passed it includes Jacob Moore. Second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of that motion, say aye. aye. All in sense, same sign. Okay, that we, motion passed. Let's make, uh, please make note in the record that uh, Robbie Moore, board member, excused himself from the room for clarification by law of part of this package of what we're doing. And as his son working for the district uh, as a student helper in our technology department. So that by law he had to do. Thank you, teacher, appreciate all of you. You're very welcome. Brian said he's checking out. Oh yeah, you can stay for the whole thing, but <laughs> Thank y'all for right. coming. Yeah. We'll see you All right. So that was approved by a vote of six, six, oh. Okay. Okay. Four minutes. All in favor of that motion say aye. aye. All in the sent same sign. That motion passed. All right, now it's time for a financial report. Anything that we're drawing what happened when people sit behind me? <laughs> <clears throat> You want you want to talk about anything in the finance report so they that, that might come up. Okay. No. No. Was there any did y'all does everyone have a chance to review where we are? Does everyone feel comfortable or have any questions about the financial report? I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor of that motion say aye. Uh -huh. All in sense, same sign. That motion passed. All right. Item A in board business is, is approving me as, as part of the Dawson Co-op. This could be any board member who would choose to rather go to those meetings. I don't mind doing it, but if y'all wanted to, I could certainly let one of you have it. You might want to do it. Mm -hmm. I make the motion to approve Dr. Brown to represent the Dawson Co-op. Second motion. Right, we have motion second. All in favor of that motion, say aye. aye. On the same time, that motion passed.
All right, then the, the next two is, is a change of leadership from, uh, from Mr. Binding to me. So the item B is there where I'm become the ex officio of the district so that I can actually review things with the banks. I can do, I am the representative of the district when it comes to those pieces. And the second one is replace Mr. Vining on the signatures at Southern Bangor. I make the motion that we appoint the Dr. Vaughn as ex officio of Grace Group District and also at the same time replace Andrew Vining with Dr. Vaughn of the Sign of the Council at Southern Bangor. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of those motions say aye. 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 All in the Senate, same sign. Those motions pass. All right, so items D, E, and F really kind of fall into the same group as well. The physical therapist contract, which is the same as we had last year. The mental health contract is also the people that would come in to work with our kids here. And also the district wellness policy that has to be, it's not changed from last year, but it has to be approved, approved annually. Anybody have any questions about these five that I see looking at? No, was there really one thing that should be a different? On that note, district wellness policy. Was there one thing that she would make different for good? No, 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 you're good. Just that revisions to policy, but did we have to vote something different or can we just accept that as it was on that page 44, the revision policy? Mm -hmm. she was have, it. it was just about the water bottles. Water bottles. Oh, I just wanted to make sure that we, if, was there anything special on that revision? Or can we just approve it as is? You can revision. you can approve this policy okay. just like this because this okay. includes whatever revision. Revision that she's okay. That's correct. That's the only thing I want to do is just make sure we got her revision. Okay, with that. Um, no. Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Can I make the motion we accept the physical therapy contract, also the mental health contract, and the district wellness policy? Second. Okay, we have a motion. Motions and seconds. All in favor of those motions, say aye. Uh -huh. All in dissent, same sign. Those motions <clears> passed. <throat> Uh, Kendall went out and, and retrieved two uh, different and looked at Kubota tractor and also looked at um, John Deere tractors and the Kubota price was far less for what we wanted to do for the entire package um, with a total pricing with a heavy duty box blade is 44390 and, and John Deere's pricing was 49698 for the same things. So Kubota is, is a great price as well. Now that's upgrading from what he came to last time. He got it. It's a it's a bigger tractor. So what we ask him, this is what he needs. Right. Yes. It, future wise. That's correct. Can can we add out of them two? Which one do you feel is a better deal for you? Which tractor? Yeah. Which tractor? No, the Kubota is fine. And that that's just one step above. What I was looking at rather than that sub compact. Yeah. I just I was got scared that it wasn't going to do everything we needed mm -hmm. to do. And rather than a 12 inch backhoe, that 16 inch backhoe with a manual thumb, mm -hmm. HD box blade rather yeah. than a little old thin one, mm -hmm. this is by far a much better track. I don't want to give with them. Yeah. Uh, so two, two, two year, I think. Two year. Yeah. It's a, I think it's three on power train. Power train, what about the best? It, it's on the, uh, the paper. Okay. That's, it is what it is there anyway. It's two years. Two years six yeah. years on the power train. Yeah, six years on the power train. It's trailer and all. And yeah, it's trailer. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. President, I make the motion we approve the uh here's our real valley tractor purchase for a tractor to include the uh box, the box blade that is this for forty four three ninety. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor of that motion say aye. aye. All in assent, the same sign. That motion passed. Okay, so we have an update from our construction group. I want to, oh, that's, we're going to skip down. That's right, because we already have this up. We, let's go down to item L, the Genesis program. So he can, that's right, because you're, you're up there. What I asked him to do was to make sure, so the board knows what we're talking about putting in. 
Uh, we kind of talked about it, but you didn't get to see it. And that's what I asked him to put together, what devices are there, what's it going to look like, what's available, and what does it mean for the $38,864. Part of this, 30000 of it, is coming from one grant that has already been approved. We filed for another grant that's a little over 100000 as well that we'll probably, we might be able to take $8,864 off of that grant as well. Otherwise, it will come out of general funds. If we can pull it out of that grant, that's what we've applied to do. Go ahead, sir. All right. So this is just a basic slideshow to kind of give you an idea of what access control is. Uh, our company, we go throughout the whole state and we work with school districts statewide. And this is something that's commonly installed whenever uh, entities are looking to secure their entry and exit points and um, just trying to keep access or keep up with who's coming in, who's leaving, and who has access to this area and this area. And it's just all conducted with a basic access control HID badge. So real simple. You can also use your uh, key fob. We have key fobs. So I've had this for about 12 years, as you can tell, it's a little beat up, but um, this makes it a little easier sometimes instead of having a badge around your neck. Um, you get about four different types of locks. You get your mag locks, which, which is what we currently have in the district because the doors that are currently in place, you could not retrofit any of these devices into it. So it's just sometimes when you get to a door, it's just, it is what it is. You, you have to throw in a mag lock and throw a motion up and just to um, secure that door. But different types, you've got strikes, which is your electric strike. Usually that goes in the door frame. And uh, if you have an empty frame, you can actually wire it down the frame put the strike in, and then you don't have to have a mag, you don't have to have a request to exit, motion, anything. Well, uh, this is usually a little easier if it's uh, capable, uh, depending on the infrastructure, but um, sometimes you just you just can't do it. And then you've got a crash bar, then um, a fine mortise. Mag lock, you got your pros, you got your cons, it's easy to retrofit, double doors with no center mill in, you can put in uh, your neck locks, um, two-way security. Sometimes people like to have a man trap. In other words, they let somebody in, they don't want to be able to get out. And and depending on the facility, it is up to code. You can't actually lock someone in. So um, not a lot of people do that, but it depends on the environment. Cons, you got a lot of maintenance with mag locks. You always have to go back, you know, to adjust. And, you know, especially in school districts, kids are hitting doors and things jar and they just they they don't really fall apart it's just you can only secure it so much to a frame and then six months to a year down the road you've got to start um, maintaining those you have to integrate it with the fire alarm because there is no eat free egress it is charged so when the fire alarm goes off you've got to be able to turn the mag locks off that way you can actually get egress out you do have motions and request to exit but they want to make sure that no matter what fire alarm goes off, they don't want anything interfering with egress out of that building. Um, aesthetics obviously don't look very well either. Um, you've got more devices with mag locks. You've got a request to exit. And, um, and of course, you've got battery backup as well. Electric strikes, like I talked about going in the frame. These are, you know, very simple to install. Again, much cleaner, cost effective. But again, you, you have to have that infrastructure in place. Cons are a little bit of retrofit, meaning you have to cut into the frame sometimes to make sure that electric lock fits. And then um, it is a little noisy. You hit a badge, you can actually hear it latch open. So sometimes it in the environment, it can disturb whoever is in that area. Electrified panic, panic devices, what we call crash bars. These are our favorite. These by far are the easiest. If you do have a crash bar, a majority of the time, what we can do is actually go in and electrify the crash bar. We can take it apart and put a little electric motor in. And when you walk up to swipe your badge, it actually retracts the crash bar. And what it does, it gives you free egress out of the building. So that way you don't have a motion, you don't have any type of fire alarm integration, anything. You just walk up, out the door. But out it keeps everyone from coming in. Egress is good, but you can also limit who's coming in too. So it makes it much easier. Um, there are uh, obviously 
aesthetics. It just, it looks clean, much more durable. Um, you can actually, in the um, programming, you can decide on like, like the meeting tonight, how you had the door wedged open. With that, you can actually set a schedule to where the crash bar would actually retract for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and the door just open. And you don't have to, you know, put a rock in between it and dog it open. It actually just, it's unlocked. So um, it is noisy. It is very noisy because you can hear that motor retracting the crash bar. Um, some power, door prep. Um, takes a little bit of, a little bit more labor to install, but um, it's still a much cleaner install. Uh, cylindrical mortise, these are extremely, extremely expensive. Um, it is a clean install. Uh, they work great, but you have to be very specific. The majority of the time when you have these, that's just because you built a new school, new gym, and the doors actually come ready to attach these locks to the door. So they're pre-made ahead of time. Um, makes it uh, much easier to add access control to those types of doors. Uh, again, pros, aesthetics, spoke compliance, maintenance. These are, you know, between these and the crash bars, these two are always going to be kind of the go-to if you can do it if you have the infrastructure. Um, power communication. This is a picture of actually one of our access control panels. Uh, when we actually add access control to a building, we'll actually have a panel that has a power supply and an electronic uh, mercury board, as you can see here. That's the mercury board that actually does all the communication. Sorry, right up here. So you've got everything in one panel. Uh, a lot of our co uh, competitors will actually have two panels on the wall. You have two power supplies. We put everything in one. That way it's all together. Um, that's some of our design coordination notes that we work with some architects and engineers whenever we're specking in our access control platform. Here's just a basic drawing. to give you an idea of how it's wired when you look at a mag lock, you've got your crash bar, keypad, request to exit, um, the electrified mortise, the strike, then you've got your controller, battery backup, power supply. Just, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what it takes on every type of access control install. And that's it. We're sweet to the point. Okay. And this is the list of where we're putting all the devices. Um, so you'll see exactly how we're going to spend the thirty-eight thousand dollars and what we're anticipating doing. And I need more approval for that. Now that we know where this is going to go, we talked about it. We never took action that said, "I don't think that we approved this." And I just want to make sure that that we have that take care of. Were there any questions, Mr. Bader? Uh, it's kind of a crash course. Yeah. But, uh, which, which one of these systems is most durable? Uh, the most durable, I would say, is the crash bar, 100%. The Von Duchel crash bars, um, I forget what the uh, the uh, cycle is, but it's they are extreme. Like, they're commercial. They or specifically kids running and, you know, crashing into them. Like, so as we're, as, as we're considering building new facilities, we want to wire them so that they're fail secure. Uh, even the maglock system, we we can install a battery backup, but there's a time limit. Power doesn't come back up. We're gonna have to go physically lock those doors up. So, did y'all want to take action on this one, or you want to wait until we get through all the other pieces? I would take a motion on this one since we discussed it. And then that way you, we can go back up to the construction manager update. Okay. Can I get a motion this approved? I make a motion that we approve Genesis Datacom for $38,864. So it's a motion. Okay, we have a motion in a second. All in favor of that motion say aye. Uh -huh. All in the same, same sign. That motion passed. All right, Mr. Hughes, ready? Before I start, I've got to thank Dr. Vaughn for helping me with this presentation. He approached me and he said, I want you to 
uh, create a flash drive and do a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> so Dr. Vaughn, if I do this presentation and one more, that'll be two that I've got. So with that in mind, we'll, we'll go. Yeah, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Sure. That's great. Right. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. He created this. <laughs> Thank you. you this is just yet. Um, some photographs of what has taken place uh, so far. You can see the uh, the audience and how bad they look. It's the worst eyesore in the whole school. Uh, if you'll go out there and look, this is what they're looking like now. And this picture was taken with only the uh, first coat of primer. It's a little bit, the color is a little bit different now. It's, uh, and they're right out there if you want to look at them. This is the cafeteria after we uh, removed all the floor tile. And this is what we found under the stage. Uh, the duct work was turn air. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a, I don't think I have a picture of what it looks like now. No. Anyway, all that's gone. And there's uh, there's some walls over here. Uh, this is a picture of the auditorium parking. You can see all the piled up asphalt, more pictures of the auditorium parking. Uh, this is part of the middle school where we're excavating. Has anyone seen the hole out there? It's a tremendous hole. This is where we're getting down to. Uh, this is a, a clay subsurface that it's uh, you have to get down to it to stabilize everything so that in the future the, the concrete, the asphalt, whatever won't crack up, won't, it'll stay right where it is. That go back to that material. That picture on the right is where we dug all of it out. That's the hard pan down to it. Yes, and there's it's some like stumps and vegetation under there that we removed. More pictures of it. Uh, we've dug down three feet in some areas and four feet in some areas. That's where we're filling back in. That's the hard pan. progress. That was the hard pan where we got down to. Yeah. If you can drive on it. Yeah, this is that's the hard pan right there. It's a clay material. And it is all this area over here. All this is four feet deep. In fact, this way it's about three feet deep. Anyway, so we have excavated 27,000 square feet. You have 27,000 square feet. We've taken 427 truckloads out. At a cost of $51,240. 427 truck loads will come back in at a cost of $115,290. When you take it out, you have to dig it out, put it in the truck, haul it somewhere. Hopefully it's not too far. When you bring it back, you have to you have to dig it out at the quarry, put it in the truck, haul it to the site, dump it, spread it six inches deep, compact it, and do it all over, every six inch lips. Uh, the concrete in 2,700 square feet, it would cost $148,500. That's a total of $350,030 in that 2,700 square feet that we have excavated. So to put that in perspective, per square foot, it's eleven dollars and sixty six point six six cents per square foot. So with that in mind, I took all I took that figure and changed all the figures uh, from our previous meeting. You remember I told you uh, we were figuring three feet out. 
And if it if it was more than that, it could it could uh, exponentially raise raise the price. Okay, so uh, so the additional the additional uh, depth. On all on the whole project for the whole school, the additional debt is going to amount to one hundred thirty four thousand six hundred seventy eight dollars. If it's exactly like what we've just done, now we're finding that the hard pan is getting shallower out here. So if it gets shallower, that price goes down. If it gets lower, it goes up. Uh, also, the auditorium. The auditorium parking lot. It was suggested that we take out the old concrete that's there. Everybody's familiar with that. It's all broken up. It looks bad. That was not addressed on in the first board meeting. So, if the board uh, agrees to that, that's another seventeen thousand square feet. If they agree to that. And the price of that concrete and the price of the extra depth, depth will add $401,000 to their original amount. The original amount we were talking about was $1.49 million. So you add that to it, it now we're at $1.9 million <laughs> if the board approves it. Any questions? You have a copy of that map for the auditorium so they can see it. Yes, know. they should have. They don't have that in this packet. Copy those figures. Pardon me. Copy those figures. Uh, you didn't get a copy? No. no. And, and we can, Third we'll, one. we'll no, send. We additional figures in the video. Oh, this right, this? No, no that's not this one. Oh, we now this this figure here uh, takes into account that 17,000 square feet. Let's see, that's that seventeen thousand square feet is the existing concrete at the auditorium parking, which we at first we're going to leave. Okay, so that additional four hundred one thousand. Includes that 17,000 17, square feet of concrete plus the additional depth. Now, this figure can go up or down. Mm -hmm. have, have you done any preliminary digging to see about no. that level? And we could. We could. We could go out to the other. I suspect it'll be the worst one. But I don't know. That. And we can go out there and dig 10 or 15, 20 holes and come up with something. We're seeing the hard pan up on the top side going toward the football parking lot. It's coming up. We're only digging about a foot and a half. If you look when you first drive in the, the a gate down there to the right, where you're digging right now, it's the hard pan seems to be coming up. There's when you get to the hard pan, you can't dig. I mean, it's hard down yeah. there. So you're not it's not like you're digging deeper. Mm -hmm. Once you get past that clay level, then you hit that hard. And I know he's been out there driving on it, so he knows it's it's hard where the concrete's not ever going it's not gonna go anywhere. And about as soon as we started digging, it started raining. Uh otherwise what we've got dug out would be filled up by now. All the other projects, like the at the uh, cafeteria parking, the the agri parking, uh, playground, all that, all that should stay about the same. Now, there's other things that will come up, uh, like there's a, there's a water, the problem with water coming into the auditorium, which we can fix. It'll it'll cost about two thousand dollars. There's various places around the field. Uh, there'll be some grass seeding. Uh, we had to take down the light pole in the uh, 
middle school parking because we were digging out three and four feet and they were only two feet in the ground. So we had to take them out. So that's a little more expense. But we're not talking about a lot. Um, and then you got to redo the electric to the pole. So everything is up in the air, really. Do we have an over though on the gymnasium putting feet, I mean, uh, heat and air? Did you think we were that, lower? that the gymnasium heat and air? Mm -hmm. Someone came up with a $400,000 figure, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking it's going to be closer to $100,000, but it may be $200,000. But there, you have hired some architects to take care of that. To, okay. And we'll, that will bid out. Okay. And the reason Whenever. for that is that there's matching funds that come from the state. Yeah. So that, that that's their requirements that it goes through a couple of different people. It has to go through an architect. It also has to go through, in that office, the environmental interior design person has to be involved. And they also have to have uh, an engineer actually look at it and help to design it. So those people have to be involved in Arkansas will not buy off on pay off on it. I think it's a 60 40 split. Okay. I, I believe so where we now are now, just the whole project is like 1.9. If we dig like we're doing now, if it comes up, it won't be as much. 1.9 plus the auditorium. I mean, the uh, gym days, excuse me. Yeah, yeah the HVAC is, is not in any of these numbers. No, no. I just thought we got, I heard we were coming in, maybe lower on that. Like, And I haven't seen any of that come back yet. Okay. My suspicion is that he's right. It'll come in lower um, because of how we're going to design it and try to keep everything as straight as possible, not put turns and bends in that air conditioning. I also estimated 47000 for the... Um, cafeteria renovations, but that's going very well. It That'll come under budget, I'm sure. And somebody's got to pick out some tile. Um, I told you that I have a meeting Thursday morning with the people that run that building. <laughs> so I'm, I'm probably going probably to want you there with examples of what they need to pick out. There's, there's other things like uh, the window seats in the cafeteria. They, they've been an eyesore forever. You know, the, there's a lot of condensation there and they're just deteriorating. But I can fix that where we won't do that again. So there's some little things, you know. Hmm. Uh, Terry's got to spend more, money. He's got to spend more time with me than he's wanted to probably too. So is the board okay with continuing on with projects as we are? You know, we don't have much choice in the elementary yeah, parking lot. Yeah. But one of the things that we're not doing is we're if we, if a problem comes up, we're not really touching this parking lot out here. It'd be the last thing that we're going to be doing in the back part of it. So if we had to, we say hold and let's let's reconsider when with if the numbers were to get terribly out of line. They might have any more questions. Are we on the schedule for August 15th? Well, if if the rain will take off, we'll be fine. We'll be there. Good. Yeah, we'll be forming probably in another couple of weeks up there for concrete. Is it, is it harder to pull that concrete up versus the asphalt? So yeah. if you were to remove the concrete, so does that add to the cost as it well? It does. It does. Concrete is hard on equipment. You know, it's hard on the truck. It's hard on the, the track hose. Yeah, especially if it has rebar in it. So that's taken into consideration to this 401000 Yes, that's yes, that's that in there. Like that seventeen thousand square feet, mm -hmm. that that figure includes taking out that concrete. Terry, on that on that picture right there, that that little bit of concrete that's back toward the small gymnasium building. That's that what circle is, area yeah, that we talked about. What is what does that concrete look like 
as far as what you've said. Yeah, it, it's it, it, needs, it needs to come out too. It's really That's cool. Yeah. Okay, we talked we talked about that part. So here's the issue with that. If we go in there and ask them to take that out now, then they're going to have time schedule issues of getting that finished. Mm -hmm. We'll be okay on it. So took it out. You think you would? Not that big an area. Mm -hmm. Not what? Not that big. How big an area is it? It's not that big. It's 120 it? by 73. So what's your recommendation? Take it out now, or take it when we we'll do the next. When we do another penalty, that area is over there is cracked. It's not flaking like what's happening take back here. Yeah. yeah, I would say take it out. Start, I hate to fix all it and go on or start making that out. With my ball tear your new Okay, so but I would I would wait. I I would do what we've got done, and then come back and take it out next summer, that, because of the time element. But what's the trucks and equipment going to do to our new concrete? We'll tear it up. In and out a bit, going to that to tear it up. Nothing. Okay. As long as you're not, standing behind it. Not going to hurt one bit. <laughs> because that's like the area that we have a flood issue. Don't hire Mitch. Like when you go to drop off your kid in the morning, that's our flood. flood yeah. Right there. Like that's, that's where you I have to. Where were the kids being dropped off in August? All of that. And, and up here uh, by the field house, mm -hmm. all goes to that corner. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's where like yeah. when you drop off your kid in the morning, that's where. They're soaked. They're soaked. Getting their, getting their feet are soaked. Well. Can't they get on the sidewalk? Does it go over the sidewalk? No, it's like it's, covered the sidewalk. It's a river. Yeah. It covers the sidewalk. Can we drop them off, like, like, so we're that, can I stand up, please? So, like, I'll drop my kid off, like, way up here, and then, like, they jump, and they walk across the green grass, and then get on that sidewalk and walk back. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, this water. is completely there's, flooded right here. Yeah, there's 72, yeah. there's 72 square feet. Space for that water to run through. I've already checked that. Mm -hmm. So I'll so see if yeah, I can figure out well. something else, but I probably can't. Okay. But I'll try. Because that just seems to hold water yeah. no matter if we get a little bit of rain or a lot of rain. That's so we drop them off like if you put it on gray, it. could you put like a low water, low water crossing so that water could get still gonna be well, through there. Right there. Can they I just take out the whole sidewalk yeah. and everything and I'll look at it. Mm -hmm. Or I mean, is potentially like dropping them off at a yeah different right location. Mm -hmm. So the ponding there is that what? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just like stop way back by the gym, and they like walk across the grass, tiptoe across yeah. the grass to get. That's not good. Water yeah. used to stand right here in the front end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It won't anymore. Yeah. We're, we're going to take care of that. It it breaks right here. It runs this way, and then comes this way. We'll make sure that no water stands here, and this will be. Uh, handicap accessible. Also, the only handicap accessible yeah. place you have is way in here, mm -hmm. uh -huh. which is in the water, uh -huh. which stands in water. Yeah. So we need to go back and look, Terry, how much egress would actually get that out of that ponding issue, so it'll skate faster. Yeah, that's a bottleneck right there. Seventy-two square feet of space that it can come out. We actually looked at that because. Going around the end of the building and that little swag that they've got in there right now, it all goes into that area. So it, the whole thing would have to be widened to take to make sure there's no water stand. That's a lot of water comes down mm -hmm. in there, but we didn't know it was that bad. We had yeah. never seen it yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. well, I'm glad you told us, but we'll know wow. how to fix it. On, on the gray, just, well, you know, just out there right looking around, right. what is that going to do to our little entrance sign and whatever? It looks like it's going uphill toward that. Is that talking about to the front door? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, back kind of the our, our entrance sign would be like right in here. It looks like to me it's up above gray. Is that going to where the flagpole's going to work? Yeah, where the flagpole and the sign is. Yeah. yeah. It's, high, it's higher. Right it looks. There. It looks like it's about. It's higher. Right foot there. and a half higher. You know. I don't know what that's going to do when we cut when the concrete up to that? Is it going to be sticking up? Above? No, that's that's what we were. Jerry, uh, Terry and I were talking about too. We may have to take some of the existing sidewalk out. Gotcha. To make sure everything's level, because it goes down. It goes like this, and then kind of then comes up, then, and then it kind of goes like this, and the water stays down here. Yeah. We'll fill it all up with clay gravel, go out there and shoot grains and adjust whatever we need to do. We need 
whatever we need. We need to take some sidewalk out, whatever. Okay. We'll make sure it, it flows. We, we just need to make sure that's granular weight. Kids don't need to be getting out of car soaking wet. Sure. Especially like if that's our ADA handicapped accessible. It'll be moved up. So yeah. we're actually taking out some of the concrete ramp walkway going up the front doors. Mm -hmm. So it'll actually match down to the parking lot. Okay. Yeah. That'll go all the way to where the columns are up at the top. That That's coming out. So it'll all slope all the way down to the parking lot. Okay. I'm okay with those four as you are. All yeah. things considered, all things considered, I'll make a motion to continue. You know, I have no trouble. Second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 well, the, the, the way they're staging this. Yeah, I see. We didn't see the cost. Yeah, the way they're staging this, we're, we still got a big front back here. So if, it, if that gets ex exorbitant, we can hold on that. And then. So what would be the cost of like? Just resurface what concrete's behind us. Yeah, yeah we got the resurface. You know, we'll reconsider like, it. Like to we got a motion to say that. If, That's not all of them. There's, not one, 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 there's, one, one, there's, one, there's one, three or four, four, four layers out there right now. It'll have to be done. Now. Yeah. 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 yeah, we have okay. a we have a motion to say we need to move. All right. We got to say we just need to pay. Okay. All in favor of that motion, say aye. All in dissent, same sign. That motion passed. If you get a chance sometime, come out and I'll show you what, what I'm talking about. They've got, there's three or four layers of asphalt out there. Like we would scrape off some and then there's another layer. Right. And they would go in and level it. And what's under it is what's rotten. Mm -hmm. and, and if you just put this much, if you took this much out, you still got that gumbo, mm -hmm. that much more gumbo in there. And once you get riding on it, it starts pumping. Awesome. And then you start getting the waves. And you're not going to get waves over here. If you want to, you can go out there and drive on it today, and you won't make a track. We don't really make a track with a loaded truck right now. You saw him. You saw him. Okay. You just need to state that he stepped out of the room. We got it. For a moment. Got okay. it. Okay, the next thing on that we're here to talk about is the technology and the purchase of of three different pieces and, and i may need victor to help me you were given an updated part that will take instead of the fifty thousand nine forty three one section the updated price list since we got our first estimate it's gone up about five thousand dollars forty forty one hundred dollars so that part will replace what was actually in your board packet, this part right here. So there's three sections to this. The first part is $2,800, and that is the hard shell cases that will go around all of the technologies. And then there's the 55000 that will be the Chromebooks that we'll utilize. And then the desktops, we're looking at 20 of those that were, were so we're trying to upgrade some of the technology that teachers are using. So that's what those are for, $5,200. And then that's for their, that's for the monitors. And then the, the $660 each of 20,000 20, is for their actual computers. So those are the numbers that would be added together in that part of it. Are you do okay explaining that? Or you hit it if you want to. Do you have any questions about that? So right now our plan is to have Mr. Ryan when he was here, he asked us to come up with a technology plan for the school district. So right now we're looking at creating a plan and those Chromebooks are going to be actually replacing three grades every single year. Uh, in the past, we have been blessed with some of the money from ESSER funds, which I'm hoping we don't ever get that again <laughs> for those conditions, but anyways. So you're looking at replacing first grade, fifth grade, and ninth grade for those Chromebooks every single year. Those Chromebooks will be assigned to students and that same Chromebook will also be carried with them. Like from first grade, they will carry that Chromebook all the way up to fifth grade. 
So like I said, right now we don't have a plan and the Chromebooks that we do have, they do expire and they're going to expire all at the same time. If that happens, then we're going to be responsible for buying all Chromebooks across the district at the same time. And you're looking at a pretty big, big amount of money. So if we do it the way we're doing it now, buying those 150 every single year, we would have a budget created just for that amount. Now, every year, the classes are different sizes. So there may be less one year, there may be more another year. But right now, those are going to be covering those three classes for next year on the Chromebooks. Uh, for the teacher's computers, we still have older computers in classrooms. Every year I've been buying about 10. I don't know if you've noticed about that. Um, and I'll replace 10 computers per building. This would be replacing 10 at the high school and at the elementary school. Um, and my goal is to have them replaced by within the next three years, all the way across. So any questions on I remember that? I told them you need to replace. What is it? I remember you need to replace those. The Teacher. whole district? Teachers. Oh, teachers? Uh, I think right now with these 20, we'll put us at about 70%. And then after, like I said, in about three years, you would be at about 100% cover. So the way I've been doing is I've been taking all computers and we have just been updating them, updating them. And what license you can, you can keep doing it, but those computers are just so old. We never really have had a plan for uh, teacher's desk computers. And this is another reason why I'm working with the technology plan to have it maybe this fall. I want to have something in place. We've never, the garden schools have never had a technology plan. So I'm planning to have one. I'm working on getting one put together for the school district. That way we have the budget and then we know when to buy. We're not just buying, just, you know, you know what I mean? So. Will that be like a new computer like every four years, maybe? For the teachers, something like that, yes. Four to five years. Yes, sir. And then for the computers, I mean, for the Chromebooks, every year, first, fifth, and ninth grade. And those Chromebooks will go with each student as they go to the next year, every single year. Have the students' Chromebooks held up? To yes. The, or do you think they, they yeah. hold up to I that? think, and also, we're also planning on somehow integrating or creating a policy where uh, insurance will, will be available for the students as well that a parent can also purchase. We're, gonna, we're also working on that as well. So that way they have some responsibility for the Chromebook as well. Yes, sir. Any other questions on that? The other item that's in the technology part is the upgrading of our cabling so that we can actually support all the computer usage that's wireless now. So, so our infrastructure was created, it was designed back in 1996, I believe. Everything that we have is from 96, pretty much. It was designed to work then. Right now, uh, in the last three years, we have probably added over 300 uh, device, new devices. And these are smart panels, cameras, those doors, they require an IP address. So we are maxing out. I was talking to the state, they recommended us to expand our IP range. Well, the problem with that is our uh, wiring does not allow the traffic to go through that much traffic. So we have to rewire with better wire. And that's gonna put us ahead probably for the next 10, 15 years for anything. But they recommended us to go ahead and update that wiring. That's what that is, let's get it ready. Because right now, um, at the end of this year, actually, we were running out of IP addresses. Some students were not able to connect because we are maxed out. And the way that works is, the state will provide you a certain amount of IP addresses. In order for them to expand, they have to go in our servers and expand their IP ranges. Well, if they do it, we're going to be bottlenecked because those cables can only handle so much traffic. And if you understand internet cable, you know, kind of like plumbing, whatever, you can only put so much through it. Right now, the state also provided us during COVID with more bandwidth. Mm -hmm. We have a Ferrari on a dirt road, basically, to put it in, you know, all that power can go nowhere. And it's only getting worse because we're adding more technology every single year. Those doors. It should take care of it. It should put us in a good place for the next 10, 15 years. Yes, sir. Cat 6A is, is, is the new, is, is it the, is. Oh, 
fresh off the shelf. We can handle uh, as a state if they provide us more bandwidth, it's going to be able to provide. Now we'll also say not just the wiring; there will also have to be switches that are going to have to be replaced. And we do have a grant that's out there that I'm planning on using next year to replace that. That's e money. And that will replace the switches next year because I don't have time to do all that this year. It's just late in the month. And we're going to be remapping uh, part of the pre-K area, middle school, and high school in this building as well. So that's what that re, um, remap and recabling is about. And one of the current concerns that we have is with Learns Act coming up, the availability of Cat 6 cable is going to get yes. tighter and it'll become more expensive. Yes. We need to get. In my opinion, what I recommend to the board is that we get ahead of the, of the curve. And on this cable, I don't know if you've noticed, there's going to be two drops of cable. I'm not just running one. I'm running two because I am also want to be ready whenever we upgrade our access points. That's our Wi-Fi setup. What we have right now was put in place like 14 years ago. It's outdated big time. It works. We make it work. But we're maxing out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any questions? I think it's something that we approved the technologies plan with this addendum of 55000 Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of that motion say aye. aye. All in the same sign, that motion passed. All right, the next one is the purchase for the ALE curriculum, which is Ed Mentham. Uh, there were two other programs that they look at. This is the most efficient. Uh, provides a broader scope for students that you can do. Not only will it be able to help you with, with ALE students, but it also help in recapturing. Also, could also help with tutoring in different levels so that you can actually program this and pull up lessons that can help those kids that might be need scaffolding, that might need extra structure uh, to build that scaffolding so they can understand what they are. So if they're struggling, that can also be used as a management tool for that too. Is this is a yearly subscription? This one is. And this is a total license for ALE and uh, unlimited six through 12. And then there's 10 spots for kindergarten through fifth grade. So it's targeted for them, for that area. We can get more, it just gets more expensive. The order for an expiration date. We need to let them know that's what we want to do. Um, I think we could probably could talk to them about holding that truth for when we actually kick. This is just when, when you talk to them, we want to do this. They'll say, okay, it'll, it'll last from here to here. I've never seen Adventum go up on their prices between here and the first start of school either. So they're pretty reasonable to work with you. This, this is used. Throughout Texas, I can tell you that every school district I've been in, this is what's come in and replaced some of the other support electronics in the schools. Uh, every every district I've worked in, this has been what they've gone to. So it's been very, very well received. And they do, this company does a lot of upgrades. So frequently they go back in and review the lessons that are there and, and modify and change and actually regret with a company that we used before. I can't remember what it was. Sounded a lot like Edmonton, but it wasn't. Um, they did not as frequently update their material. And I heard you correctly, unlimited spots for six through 12. Yes, ma'am. Oh, 10 through K through 5. K through 5 is 10, and it's six through 12 is unlimited. Make a motion that we approve the annual approval. Second motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of that motion, say aye. aye. All in the same sign, that motion passed. And the last one is we went back and revisited the calendar so that we could add in it the dead weeks for next year. So it shows those dead weeks for those last two weeks. I believe that it's good policy for us to try to avoid as a district any kind of staff development during that time. It, I think that was that was well received. And I think that is uh, I think that's just trying to be true for everyone who has athletes and might be teaching in our school too. So that'll help out. So that that's we added that line for June 24th. It doesn't show up very well in this calendar, but it's the 17th through the 28th of June. Mm -hmm. And we'll keep that in the calendar. So we'll we'll make sure that, that stays in there. 
make a motion we approve the updated form. Sure. Okay, we got a motion to second. All in favor of that motion say aye. No. All in dissent, same sign. That motion passed. The last thing we need to bring to the board and the board needs to accept would be that our campus improvement plans that needed to come to you. So we're gonna I'm gonna ask the principals if they would present if they have any questions. Elementary, private, I'm talking about this for a moment. Okay, so you have a copy in front of it. So what it kind of outlines is it outlines our mission, you know, going into next year to really increase the rigor for our students and really um, tie in some what we call HQIM, high quality instructional materials, which is part of our uh, collaboration with DESE for our literacy support. And it ties in the interventions that we're doing and that we want to continue and strengthen, especially for those students showing signs of dyslexia and it also incorporates you know our social emotional learning that we do with CKH so if you just want to look over it and have any questions for me okay CKH is capturing kids oh, be careful with our acronyms because you might confuse me okay it also summarizes our work with our professional learning communities that we've had in the past and how we're going to move forward it does also state that our math curriculum for next year is going to be il illustrative math. So that's a new part of our plan as well. And with the restructuring, uh, I noticed like your school utilize the, the dyslexia programs with interventions. I know that you guys use some of your other teachers like to help pull out like do you feel like we're still at a good point or like that we have enough interventionists to come in? Like I know Dawson is helping, but yeah. So like our our new IF, Miss Kinzer, she's gonna spearhead that, you know, and make sure that it's organized and ready to go. And make sure it's all scheduled out. So our plan is to use Barton for one of our dyslexia interventions and structures as well because it ties into our phonics instruction. I'm gonna grab it so quick. Oh, sorry, get that. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all right. There you go. And so in the past, a lot of the interventionists that we were using were all activity teachers, you know, when we were pulling them in to help with interventions as well. And so they're being pulled, you know, at different campuses coming into the next year with the restructure. So our plan is we're getting other staff trained as well. With Barton, we can have our instructional paras do the training and that makes them qualified to provide the interventions as well under the guidance of Ms. Kinzer. So we've got it lined up th this summer for our parents to do, as well as some additional teachers that might have time, like Coach Kirkpatrick, mm -hmm. Michelle Smith, they're going through the training as well to be ready so we can pull multiple people in next year. Kim, you said Barton and what else? Barton, and let me make sure I said it. Stru Structures. Structures is a branch off of our phonics for us for now previously, they they only wanted something else besides Barton. It was take flight. It was take flight. It was take flight. And, and so, well, I just I'm just curious, why are we not using that? To... We're not using it going into next year. Um, the requirements for the staff to use take flight was it demanded more out of our resources. Like it had to be a staff with at least a master's degree but to go through it. And it was a two year program to get trained and qualified to participate and take flight. And so the structures is gonna take the place of that? Well, structures is a program that we were already using. And so we can continue using that and continue using Barton as well. At the primary school with K-4, you know, I got to really see the teachers using Barton and the staff and, we actually, we saw a lot of growth on our data with the NWEA for the students who were having those Barton interventions. So we're excited moving forward. So. Kim, on these new programs, uh, you know, no longer we've been dealing with the board, we, we see all these new programs come down the yes. line. And in my common sense, would we get to something that we're really satisfied with that does a good job and stick with that versus retraining teachers, retraining personnel to learn something new 
that don't seem to work, and then we do something else. Is is that a concern of y'all? It's not a concern of mine right now. Barton's kind of old school. Yes. Yeah, I've heard. I mean, yeah, even I've heard Barton. Yeah, it's kind of old school. And with the progress we've seen this year, I feel like it's something good. I'm glad it's kind of stuck around through the years because even though it's old, it's still falling in line with a lot of the new leading initiatives that are pushed out through the state. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay, and for high school, we're all pretty much in the same boat that districts are around the state. And our goal for high school is to get our reading level up and to get our math scores up. With the reading level, what we're planning to do is incorporate more reading um, text passages and things like that into all of the content areas. We're not putting all the pressure on our ELA teachers because reading, you need it across the board. So we're bringing in our social studies. We're bringing in our ELA. Of course, we're still requiring critical reading class for ninth graders. So that kind of gives them a double up on their ELA, working in our PLCs to come up with common formative assessments. The goal is to teach these kids on grade level because we're never going to get them to grade level if we don't teach them on grade level. And then incorporating learning labs into the day to help pick the ones up who are really struggling to give them that extra time. So we're not pulling as much out of the regular class time. We're doing regular class time on grade level and then providing the supplements in the learning lab. And with the math, of course, our biggest issue this year was just consistency in math. So we're hoping that the restructuring is going to bring us up with that and we're going to have some consistency through the math courses. But that's kind of what we're doing the same thing with them. We're getting new curriculum for ELA. We're getting new curriculum for math. So we're going to use those as best we can to get these kids up to reading level where they need to be and get them up to grade level in all of their tested areas. And we're using our ACTS fire data and everything that we've gotten through NWEA this year to gauge where they are and where we need to get them. Questions? Are you excited about our new block scheduling? Do you think that's going to help? or? Is I think it's going to help to give them that extra time of the day for those kids that really, really need it because bringing them in, trying to get them here after school and they've got so many other things going on, being able to build that into the day, I think it's gonna be helpful. Thank you for all the work to go into that. You said teaching on grade level. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way to get the kids to grade level is to teach on grade level. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest hold up? You have, have a lot of people who are, who wanna help the kids so much that they feel like they need to back down off of that rigor to get to where the kids are. Instead of teaching them where they are, you have to bring them up to where you need them to be and just provide all of that support. But I think if there was a lot of pressure of they felt like their kids were going to fail if they expected too much of them. So they kind of, I don't want to say they like tried to remediate, but they tried to bring it down and bring their expectation down a little bit so that it wouldn't be so difficult for the kids. So we're trying to you know, rewire that thinking of the only way to get kids up is to get down here in the dirt with them. No, start up here. And I'm a firm believer and always have been, kids will rise or fall to meet your expectations. And if you expect them to be up here, they're gonna do everything they can to meet you up here. But if you continually expect them to be down here, that's where they're going to stay. So it's just been kind of a hesitation of not wanting the kids to fail. That's led to kind of that backing off of the rigor. So we're really working to get that back up to where it needs to be. That's all. Yeah, I've got a question. I mean, how are we going to help identify those challenging students? That's where we bring in our NWEA scores and our ACT Aspire and the formative assessments that teachers are doing in their classroom. That's kind of what they're designed for to gauge them where they are along the way so that you're not waiting until the end of it and going, okay, what do you know? Tell me what you know. And then you realize they don't know. But you have to test them along the way. I want to look at the data. I want to make sure what they call it break one of the students. Well, that 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 shows assistance is not there and you break the student. Well then you they just give up. They walk away. I want to make sure we ain't here and forgetting about those students there. Now that's the whole point of having those learning labs is to get those students who are not there, give them that extra time. 
but you'll be able to use that minimum too for part of that to help. Right. If gap was where they need right. to go. And that minimum works so that if we go in there and you set the level and they say, well, they didn't do very well on it, it backs down a level. And it, then it doesn't begin. If they get that well, then it builds back up the level. So it kind of hits as you go through the system. Which is really how the new testing for the state is going to be. It's adaptive. It's going to meet those kids and then kind of pull them along the way. In my mind, I want to make sure we're, we're preparing our children because, you know, when you get out of high school, they're removing all those. Right. Benefits. Right. I want to make sure that students. Yeah. The ready. last thing we ever want to do is set them up for failure. And that's not what we're trying to do. Any further questions? I need I need the board to accept those improvement plans so we can submit them to the state. Yes. I make the motion to accept the improvement plan. Second. Can we have a motion to second? All in favor of that motion, say aye. All in dissent, same time. That motion passed. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. We got a motion second to adjourn. All in favor of that motion, say aye. All of the same time. We are done.